Um, all right, there was one other thing that I wanted to try and talk about well, and it's over my head. But the, the thing is that there is, I've talked about drama going on in uh, Liberia, led by Bishop Choir, who up until recently was thought to be pretty conservative and biblical, but he has refused to allow any kind of conversation about disaffiliation in his annual conference. He's used uh, coercive uh, power to silence voices, to have people removed summarily from boards and influential positions. He's trying to keep everybody in line, and it's not exactly going well. Um, this is a report that was submitted by the uh, delegation who attended General Conference. It is a long report. Look how long this is. It's uh, 38 pages. There's no way we could cover it today. And I'm not going to pretend to have read the whole thing. I did read this opening letter from Jerry Kula. You'll remember Jerry Kula. He's been active in the General Conference for many uh, years. He was the one who got his Bible and lifted it up on the floor of General Conference this time and just said, we cannot go the way that this denomination is going. We cannot let you go this way because the Bible is so clear on these topics. Um, this is just the opening letter where he makes clear the reason that they weren't able to submit the report. This was uh, uh, submitted on in July of, uh, yeah, this is just last month to the bishop, and, and then it was supposed to be presented to the whole annual conference there, but there's been some hiccups. So the reason it came later, he says, is because at the tail end of their stay in America, so many of them were got got hospitalized, which is terrible. But then you'll see how they laid out their report. They covered a lot of stuff. And so the problem that came is not with everything that di they did here, but there are some significant issues that were raised by the bishop with this report. So I'm going to call that up here just real quick. Here's the bishop's letter. And I apologize for the format. I, this is the best I could do. So the, the tenor in all of these letters is quite respectful, but underneath it is some frustration. So he um, <clears throat> expresses his deepest thanks, but then he has five different things that he has a problem with <coughs> in the report that they submitted. Point one, you notice six, six signatures were missing. There were 16 total delegates, I believe. Only 10 of them signed uh, that final report. Section 2 captioned, mandates of the Liberian delegation to the General Conference should be deleted from this report, the entire section. So apparently they made a number of mandates as to what they need to do. I'm pretty sure in that section they say we need to leave the United Methodist Church. And he says that's, that's entirely inappropriate. Verse uh, point three, under section four, major issues passed at the General Conference and its implications of the United Methodist denomination and Liberia Annual Conference. This report seems to be relitigating the decisions of the General Conference and criticizes a major policy of the highest policymaking body, the General Conference. Your report has downplayed the issue of the ratification of the worldwide regionalization plan. Why? So remember, the ratification process is that the General Conference adopted this legislation, but it's not actually ratified till it goes out to all the annual conferences over the next four years, and all the annual conferences take votes with their delegations. And when you put all of the delegations together, every delegate, uh, two-thirds of those delegates have to vote for regionalization in order for the plan to be adopted. So with Cote d'Ivoire leaving, with Nigeria leaving, with... Uh, uh, Oh, I don't know, Kenya, Ethiopia leaving with probably Zimbabwe leaving down the line. Um, the DRC, there are lots of conservative groups in Africa leaving, conferences in Africa leaving. They are probably, I don't know, I shouldn't say probably. It is a, a possibility, a, a strong possibility that regionalization will be adopted. Um, but also, the Bishop Choir is saying here, you're acting like it's a done deal. It could be undone. It could be, you're, you're speaking falsely about this. Moreover, he says you're relitigating, you're arguing against what the conciliar body uh, decided, and that's inappropriate. Point four, your recommendation for the Liberia Episcopal area of the UMC to become an independent denomination to align with the recommendation is out of order. It should be deleted, so it's it's all connected to the same stuff. And then this is the, this last one is the, the, the dinger. I don't know, this 
this report is written in the context of Good News, the Wesleyan Covenant Association Africa Initiative, which have ad advocated and are still advocating for the UMC to disaffiliate and join the GMC, or these individual churches to join the GMC. The major decision passed at the General Conference concerning worldwide regionalization, which is supposed to be ratified by each annual conference, is downplayed and even condemned. Let it be known that by unanimous vote, the committee on reference declared, and the General Conference approved, that all petitions from individuals, local churches, and conferences no longer associated with the UMC are disqualified. Hence, the Liberia Annual Conference, the UMC, cannot accept a report that mimics those groups that advocated and still are advocating for the disaffiliation in the UMC. So he makes that sound reasonable, but what he says is there's a whole line of conversation that is just not open for conversation. doesn't matter if it's the majority opinion or not. Uh, you cannot say this stuff. So choir, I've neglected on the front end of this report to talk about. I, I covered footage, I don't know, a month ago where he had been speaking at a church and people there were so mad at him, they chased him away. He had to get in his car and run away while this angry group of people chased him, uh, were yelling at him. It was it was borderline violent. It was an intense event. It wasn't to the level of violence that we saw in Nigeria a couple days whenever I reported on that. But there's a lot of tension here, and what he's saying is you cannot give voice to the majority opinion here in Liberia. It's inappropriate. Uh, I'm not going to let you submit this report until you augment uh, these things. So this is the final document that was published just today. Um, well, I guess it was um, August 20th, it says, so three days ago. Uh, this was sent to Chris Ritter, and he didn't realize it was private, so um, he accidentally published it, um, and then he followed up with me and said, don't talk about this yet, but I'd already gotten a copy. Have I read it? No. Um, but they address the different points. So this is this is written to the bishop to answer his different critiques, and they spend more time answering these critiques. I was curious about the six who were who didn't sign, and they don't say why they didn't sign, but they just say this is the majority opinion. It consisted of sixteen delegates. Uh, only uh, the sixteen of us secured visas. The official report resulted from the series of deliberations that all 16 members were a part of. At this close of our deliberations, 10 delegates signed the official report, while six declined to sign the report. Uh, and it's a right not to sign. So uh, they have some emails that they wrote as to why they didn't sign. So I've, I've written Jerry Kula and a couple of others to figure out why it was these six didn't sign. Um, but they deal with uh, these other uh, uh, problems that um, okay, so they restate the five reasons that the bishop did not want to approve this. Um, oh, and that's a quote from the bishop as well. In addition to your observations and demands, you also instructed the delegation to revise what you consider a draft report and resubmit it to you. We thank you. However, we would like to offer you the following responses to your observations, demands, and inquiries. One, the Liberia Conference presented to you a copy of its official report. The delegation awaits you and the bishop's cabinet to convene the proper forum so it can present its official report so that the august body that elected the delegation to re represent it at the worldwide gathering of the UMC. The official report is not for our resident bishop. Neither is Liberia Annual Conference elected delegation to the recent General Conference obliged to make a report to our resident bishop prior to making its report to the Annual Conference. However, in view of the fact that, and consistent with the Book of Discipline, the resident bishop is the presiding officer of the Annual Conference, it was prudent that you receive a copy of the delegation's official report prior to the delegation making its report. So what they're saying is you're overstepping your bounds by requiring that we issue a new draft of this. We're not submitting it to you for approval. We're just letting you know. Uh, three, the Liberia Conference uh, report to the church, uh, a copy of which we gave you, is the official report of the delegation. It is not a draft report or a document, as you indicated. The delegation comprising of responsible, trained, educated, and well-seasoned academic scholars and administrators will not sign a draft report. So they've already signed it. It's the official report. Hence, we feel demeaned by your statement that a copy of our official report given you is a draft document. 
while you have the right to hold consultations with the delegation or express your opinion about the official report of an appropriate forum with the conference, we employ you to acknowledge, I think they meant to say implore, to acknowledge that we gave you a copy of the official report for the delegation. Point four, the Liberian delegation uh, consisted, oh, we already read that dealing with the six people. Five, given the democratic nature of our church, we respected the rights of a few members of the Liberian delegation not to sign the official report. The majority members of the delegation signed the report, thus making it our official report. Uh, besides, according to the Roberts Rules of Order, bases for determining a vote result, it is a requirement that a vote taken must meet the consensus of a majority. Um, so that I'm going to skip the rest of that. Based on parliamentary procedures consistent with these standards, a presiding bishop cannot tell elected representatives of the church how to write a report or what should be included or deleted from an official report. When the delegation makes its presentation to the official reporting session, delegates will respond to that report. And at that time, the presiding bishop could then make his observations and may offer any suggestions to the plenary for its consideration regarding the presentation. So what they're making clear is, Bishop, you're trying to keep this from even coming to the floor of annual conference, and you really can't do that. But you do have authority as a presiding officer to respond to it publicly, and, and that's well within your rights. It's within our rights to submit this without your interference, and it's within your rights to comment on it publicly. Seven, we are sure that the bishop is aware of the caliber of the leaders that constituted the delegation. To suggest or even indicate that the delegation, that they should delete or remove a certain portion out of their official report without any presentation, discussion, or reflection by all those involved in the preparation of the report is unacceptable and out of order. So even though the tone is respectful, they're, they're being very bold here. Eight, the delegation's recommendations contained in its official report are not out of order, as you indicated. Uh, I, I'm not, there are too many points. Nine, it is shocking to note that our resident bishop would perceive the delegation's official report to have been written in the context of Good News, the Wesleyan Covenant Association, and the Africa Initiative. We are once again surprised that our bishop would demean his fellow elders and eminent members of the laity of our annual conference to mere stooges of caucus groups within the worldwide UMC denomination. This is unfortunate. The delegation wrote its report in the context of the biblical Christian worldview, which you, Bishop, and all of us in our annual conference have always stood for as reflected in our ordination, preaching, teaching, evangelism, discipleship, and worship. In addition, all of our resolutions, including the recent decisions of the Liberia Annual Conference out of the participants' responses, and all of our unbiblical decisions taken at the General Conference conference influence the context of the report. So they're saying, you're trying to, to write us off as some like fringe caucus group opinion. This is the universal opinion of Liberia. It always has been. What are you saying, Bishop? 10, the delegation would appreciate where you try to identify any substantive issues within the report that you disagree with. Then when the delegation presents its report, you may arise, you may raise such issues for consideration by the plenary. And then 11, while we await your decision to decide what to do with the delegation's official report, we wish to inform you that we have shared copies with the district superintendents. The dean of the bishop's cabinet on behalf of the superintendents have extended an invitation to the head of the delegation to make a comprehensive report to that august buddy body during their mid-year meeting with the bishop uh, from uh, 19 to 22, uh, August 19th to 22nd in Bonga Bong County. By sharing copies with each of these superintendents, we anticipate that they will be better prepared for future, fruitful interaction. Uh, and then we've shared it with other people. So I'm not going to read the rest of this document except for this paragraph right here. At the 188th session of the Liberia Annual Conference held in Bonga District Conference, you reiterated a statement you once made at a 2004 General Conference in your rejection of homosexuality that, quote, the church cannot license people to go to hell. At that conference, you also repeated your support for the traditional biblical principle of marriage, one man to one woman, and pledged your support for the UMC Africa Initiative. In your closing marks, you vowed, if we will eat sand, we will eat sand. Liberia UMC must be serious about God, for we will not beg for bread. Sadly, however, you have left many of us wondering as to what has gone wrong.
Why have you suddenly diverted from the liberating gospel of Jesus Christ on these critical issues that have to do with our faith, our evangelical, conservative biblical stance on the Holy Bible regarding these matters? So, if you want, uh, uh, that whole document is available at uh, peopleneedjesus.net, Chris Ritter's blog. He's made that publicly available. You can read that for yourself. But this is a polite rebuke of a bishop that seems to have forgotten uh, his original clarity on these matters. He said, we'll eat sand if we have to. We're not going to be slaves to the Western money. Uh, he seems to have forgotten that. Uh, he, he's trying to present that regionalization somehow keeps them pure, even though they're still tied to a larger body that is now uh, allowing for gay marriage. And they're reminding him, no, you've already spoken publicly on this. You've already taken your stand. You need to allow us to at least have the integrity that you seem to have lost. They should have put that sentence in there. That's a good sentence, but it's a little bit over the line and disrespectful. So um, I, I just find all that interesting. I admi I've always admired Jerry Kula's boldness, and I've appreciated his, his uh, strength and language. We need to pray for Liberia. Uh, it's a hard thing to stand against one's bishop, and especially publicly. So pray that God shines his light and his truth and that the people of Liberia are able to get good and solid information such that they're able to act conscientiously and boldly. And so we'll turn in prayer in just a moment.